Hello, beautiful souls. I'm going to give you the last of the Divine Light Ray series. This is the Family of Light. You may have heard the Family of Light in reference to the Pleiades. That's part of their um, lineage. Then there's all sorts of um, earthly entities that have taken that moniker and used it for themselves. And so just use discernment when you encounter something that says they are of the family of light. I am speaking today from the aspect of the archangels and the divine with some sprinkles of the Pleiadians in there. The family of light dissected. The limits that make much of humanity's place upon their love. So the limits of love that humanity places in their heart. That they will love their own family, country, religion, or community better than they love those on the outside. Does not restrain your heart. So your love of your family, your country, your religion, or community, like your brain telling you you need to love them bigger, better, longer, deeper, actually doesn't keep your heart from loving outside of you, of the, that list. You are capable of loving humanity, of loving all of creation on earth as an extended spiritual family. You will love all as your own. You are meant to belong to a broader family of light. This is one of the one of the issues I have with all religions. And that is they pit one against the other in a way that makes it seem like, you know, religion B's um, way of embodying the divine is not as good, righteous, I don't know what word you want to give it, um, benevolent as religion A, you know, when instead realizing, number one, our religion is man-made. So when you get over that fact, when you actually have congregations of people coming because their true intention is to connect with the divine source, prime creator, not the the BS that is the minutia of all these different religions, but true, deep spiritual connection to source creator. That should be celebrated, not judged upon. But that's not what religions do. Anyway, this came as a byproduct of my own shadow work. I was very, very shut down and closed in my heart space. And I did that, that came about because of the life that I had survived. I mean, yes, I soul contracted the majority of my trauma and I 100% accept that. But at the time I was really in like flight or flight mode and it took me a very long time to get out of that. I'm, I'm talking decades and decades of that will harden you in many ways. And for me, it was walling off my heart. So I didn't continue to have these, you know, big, deep heartaches. So as I did the shadow work to heal in order to begin to feel again, which I have to give so much gratitude to the Sophia dragon tribe because, uh, unsolicited, I spoke about this in, in a couple of videos, but unsolicited, I, I made a comment one day to a really good friend, sister, and said, you know, I just don't feel love. I know, like cognitively, I, I love people and I know that some people genuinely love me, but I don't feel it. I no longer feel love. And I... I'm not kidding you. Within moments of me uttering those words, the entire Sevilla dragon tribe circled around me and started to give me true, unconditional, compassionate love like I have never felt before in my life. And once I felt it, they said, do you feel that? S sobbing. Yes. And they said, this is what love feels like. And then they poured it on. So they gave me a little 
a little taste and they saw how much I loved it. And then they lit the flames of transformation and they took down all the walls I had bit built up over the decades. And now I feel it all. And I'm very grateful for it because if you go through life, not feeling you're not really living, you're just existing. So once I did that, it became quite natural for me to extend love out of my vortex. So some souls have incarnated to learn about duality, us versus them. Others have the purpose of teaching unconditional love, all embracing love. You are one of these people. If you're listening to this message, you are one of these people. There are light workers and way showers and star seeds that have the mission of just spreading unconditional love. That is your mission. You feel that there's a bigger purpose for you on earth than just sitting in traffic and clocking in and out of work. You're right. When you have to do that, because we do live in a world that requires uh, an energy exchange of currency to, to live, to pay for our our uh, shelter and our food and our vehicles and transportation and blah, blah, blah. When you can truly give unconditional love without judgment, without reservation, without contention, you are fulfilling one of your life's missions. And it could be your only life mission. I don't know. Most of us have that and other things that we are responsible for. You have taken life to love the many, not just the few. And you're walking the talk. And there are those that are judgmental and they go, oh, so-and-so talks about this, blah, 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 blah. But what's really happening? Well, I'm the first to tell you, I do all of my work energetically. And I send it with the clearest intention possible. It's how it gets received or not received. On the other end, I don't have any control over. But I'm going to keep fighting evil with love. Because it is very effective and it feels so much better than armoring up and grabbing my shield and my sword, which I do on occasion as well. So our journey through all the life streams bring us here to teaching unconditional love and also being able to embrace and accept unconditional love. For those of us that have been through it and we've shut down that, that heart chakra space, we just you know, we have issues. That was the me then, not the me now. Well, it's easy. It's easy to get there. It's easy to get to where you're like, mm, yeah, it's not going to give us those blinders on. I'm not going to give any attention. I don't feel anything about that. It's just not for me. But it's not living. It is not living. And it's safer. And there's those that would argue it feels better, but the action is actually that it doesn't feel at all. You don't feel. For this life purpose to be anchored, issues in your biological family may keep you from bonding with them in a typical way. Perhaps you were the odd one in your family, the one whom no one really understood. I resonate with that so deeply. I used to always say I was the reverse black sheep. In my case, this is very true. I chose to incarnate into an earthly family that had no soul family. So some of us chose to be surrounded by our soul family members, which incarnated in our earthly family members in various forms. And I didn't do that. I don't know why, but I didn't do that. I was surrounded by darkness. My earthly parents made an agreement with Lucifer to basically not parent me. Lucifer and Beelzebub. And uh, I was the proverbial like drop of oil in the vat of water. And so... I felt very disconnected from them. I always did, but I was always drawn to 
ground myself in those moments. I always went outside. I always was like, as a kid, I used to get locked outside all the time and I would just find myself making mud pies and putting mud in my hair and acting like I was a mud princess and the dirtier, the better. <laughs> and then that's how I coped. And, um, then I was in water from the time I was six, I swam competitively and I was in water 11 months out of the year and that saved me. I'm pretty sure. So perhaps you felt loved, but couldn't live the way your family wanted you to live. I found that to be true too. Maybe you lost family members through death, divorce, disease, or depression, or as a byproduct of addiction or emotional immaturity that left you disconnected from key family members. And honestly, a lot of those are at play, I think, for a lot of us. In my case, I joined the army to get out of that situation. I wanted to get out of that town, out of that state, and out of the family. I left when I was 18, and it felt like I was alive for the first time in my life. I felt really authentic. And I started to discover who I truly was because I was able to shine without the repercussions of those around me, the family that was always so quick to tell me I was doing everything wrong. So my family never wanted me to go to the military. They thought that was a horrible decision and I did it anyway. And then I had such a good experience. You know, people say, well, if I could go back and change things in my life, I would. That's not one thing I would change. I had a really great experience in the military as active duty for six years. Well, five years. I got a little bit early and then I was in the reserves for a few years. And I loved it. It was really good for me. It was really good for my character. And, uh, you know, there are hard times and it built me up. You know, I had been an athlete my entire life. So it wasn't really the physical part of it, but it was really did help fulfill a longing that I had for family because I came into this incarnation already missing my soul family. And then I wasn't surrounded by anyone that I could really connect to. And it took me a really, really long time. So I was 18 years old before I really started to have like meaningful connections to people that felt deeper than the superficial. And that started to occur when I was in the military. And then once, once I was out of that, I was also selected to be a leader in my platoon. I was um, selected to be the first squad leader. And then I was offered a position for officer candidacy school. Now that's something that they offer people that are enlisted to transfer over to the officer ranks. And my drill sergeants just loved me. So these naysaying family members that I had in the course of eight weeks decided that I had done something good and they wanted to come to my graduation so that they could take the credit. <laughs> the one, you know, the sister that said, they're going to send you packing because you're going to be a complete and utter failure. Well, then all of a sudden she was there, um, you know, flirting with my drill sergeant, acting like this was a great idea. And we told her to do this all along when they didn't. They, in fact, kicked and screamed when I said that's what I wanted to do. It took them months because I was 17 when I made the decision. My father months to sign the papers. I was going to do it anyway. When I turned 18, he finally gave in. So they were stunned. They were stunned at what I had accomplished in eight weeks. And they just kept saying, oh, we knew this was going to be great for her. And I was like, you mofos know damn good and well you had me counted out before I ever even got on the bus to come here. They never supported me in doing that. And then they wanted to come in and take the credit. Whatever. I got praised for what I had accomplished on my own. And I knew that. And they knew that. And at that moment in time, things definitely changed. If your father figure was absent, while you must do the emotional healing work to process that pain, understand the purpose of the absence for your own spiritual connection to remain intact, pure, and powerful. If your mother figure was absent, 
while you are advised to do the emotional work to process that pain. Understand that the purpose of that absence for you to look beyond your immediate family to find your place and to find yourself belonging to a being, belonging to and being devoted to the entire human race. So when our core family, the ones that we incarnated in and with, that we chose to incarnate in and with, abandon us, either emotionally or physically. It doesn't have to be a life sentence. It shouldn't be a life sentence. At some point, you realize that you can take care of yourself and all that you have and all that you need is within you. And when you start to truly love yourself and you forgive yourself and you forgive all those involved and you realize that they showed up for you because this is part of your soul contract and you agreed before you ever took your first breath here to be in with these people and they agreed to hurt your feelings and they agreed to abandon you for it to be the catalyst for you to strengthen strengthen your resolve, strengthen your will, strengthen your spirituality and your connection to the divine. That is how you find the silver lining of a lot of the pain that happens to us, for us in our life. There is always a bigger purpose. So you can choose to be bogged down in that event and just churn and churn and churn and churn. Or you can raise your vision up over the horizon and you can see the big picture down the road and you go, that looks interesting down there. I think I'm strong enough to get out of this hole, climb my, out of this hole, pull myself up out of it and go chase my desires and dreams because that looks a lot more fun than this. Understanding that growth comes from being at uncomfortable. It comes from adversity. It comes from friction. And it, all you have to do is the work. I know it's easier said than done. Do the work to expand your consciousness. Do the work to expand your capacity to love, expand your capacity to have compassion and kindness. And you have to start within yourself. You have to do that for yourself. The pain that was part of how you remained unconditioned by the more typical family bonds while these bonds are necessary for many souls to experience your life lessons, the difficulty you may have experienced regarding them helped push you to become a child of love. It's like when you, when you have nothing but darkness around you, you really do um, understand and appreciate the light a lot more. So when you are, able to survive through an absence of love exterior love you really are surviving and being flooded with love from the divine right into the core of your being and then the love that grows within you is infinite it's boundless and is much more viable than any love that anyone else can give you the love that comes within is the love that springs eternal. You had to seek family in expansive ways, remaining open as you searched for love, rather than feeling satisfied by your immediate tribe and closed to those outside of it. When I received my clearing, my QET session, two years ago, a little over two years ago, and then I started to receive the downloads of the truth of my earthly family and I realized that that was soul contracted and I realized that a big part of what I had dealt with in painful experiences was really meant to propel me forward and not to be stuck there not to you know put in a change of address to heartache lane um but I also quickly was like why like why did why did I have to have this tumultuous life why did I do that I was also being given information about my soul mission and the prophecy of our family and, you know, big things that were on the horizon for me. And Mother Sophia said, 
If you were a part of a truly loving, compassionate, and kind family that accepted you for who and what you were and are, you would not be so eager to step into the role that is meant for you in this now moment to help new earth, to help leaders, and to help heal all that encounter you. And that's true. I've been, I've encountered many soul family members that they are in more loving families and they're very comfortable and they were doing some shadow work, some soul growth, some inner work or whatever to a point. And then they stopped because their shadow work was guiding them to make changes in their life. And they didn't want to make those changes because they liked things, how they were, how it was, it was dependable. It was comfortable. And growth does not occur when you're comfortable. Growth occurs when you're uncomfortable, when there is adversity and friction. That's when we grow. That's when we see what we're made of and beyond. Suddenly it all made so much sense. This was the sacred geometry of life. I remember when I was receiving this, this message from Mother Sophia, and it was like I had a flash of like the, the core of the sacred geometry flower, the flower of life. And I saw like this life stream early on was at the far end of a petal. And I had to traverse and navigate my way back to the core of me, to the, the, the heart centered me, the true essence of me, which really was not about the person that that family raised, but who I truly am at the core, the essence, the energy. So you can come through your experience, not as a victim of circumstance, but as an empowered soul, understanding that you play a huge role in whatever events occurred in your life for the opportunity to learn and grow. Process it, heal it, forgive it, and then step into the spiritual blessings gained through your atypical relationships with your biological family. So I know I was yearning for my soul family i miss them so much i miss those connections so much i had one childhood friend that i kept through adulthood and she has a soul family soul with her it's been a very very strong connection that i really couldn't put into words and was definitely outside of my core family but I, without that tether, without that respite, without that unconditional compassion, love, I don't know where I'd be. It was really important. And I thank her. Although you were not meant to belong in a traditional way to your family of origin, you shall not be denied the love you need. You are here to be able to build a human family joined by more than blood or legal union. And that is as we connect to our soul family members throughout the world, as we connect in a meaningful way to, to beings that we just met in the physical, but then we understand that our souls have been together for thousands and thousands of years. It is profound. I can't really articulate how it feels you have to just experience it but I definitely invite you to do that and our soul connections are the anchor that we need in my humble opinion to help bridge us from the existence that we soul contracted in this life because those contracts are ending and closing up and sealing and we anchor into our next life which because of the end of the 26,000 year cycle and the planetary ascension and then the population ascending with it, we're just merging into that next one. We don't have to die. We don't have to transition out of it and then transition into it like it used to look, which was death. Now we are transitioning in form. So it sucks. <laughs> That's why you have ascension symptoms. That's why you have bad days. That's why you're dizzy all the time and your ears are ringing and you're feeling like you're caught between two different worlds because you are and it won't last forever. Thank goodness. So when you reunite with your soul family, when you reunite with 
the beings that sat around that table at the karmic board and all decided the role that they were going to play in your life stream. And everybody showed up for you. And we all showed up for each other. And then we reunite again. It is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful event. And I don't take it lightly. Every single one. Every single one of my soul family members that I've ever encountered, I've been so thrilled to encounter with them and to engage with them and to get to know them. And to each time there's an activation of what we meant to each other kind of a deal, like the energetic relationships that we've had in the past. And a lot of that starts to come in and it helps to fill in a lot of the missing pieces of family that I've had, that we've had. So it will not just be you loving the world, but it will also be the world loving you back. The power of your heart to give and receive love shall not be wasted. And that's the thing. You can always choose love. And when you choose love in an authentic way, you have to start with yourself because you have to have it within your being to truly and authentically give it to someone else. If you don't love yourself, like if you look in the mirror and you do not like what you're seeing and you use disempowering and harmful words about your body and your mind and your, and your thoughts and your actions all the time, you do not have love to give. You are saying it, but it is not fueled with the love of emotion because you are void of it. So you have to do the work that's going to bring love back into your being so much so that it overflows and it's able to be given to those around you. So it's time to gently undo those patterns of attempting to fit in. You were never meant to fit in some of those places. It was meant to be so much friction that you moved on and away, taking the lessons with you. Instead, trust that you are exactly who and where you're meant to be. When you do, your magnetism will draw love and friendship from those who vibrate at a similar level of consciousness to you, and you get to leave the past hurts and rejection behind. You no longer need them to grow. That should be a freeing statement for you. When you feel the pain from the source event, allow for the healing to come. Once the shadow is healed, your soul will emit a higher frequency and that is the magnetism of your frequency. The frequency attracts like frequency. This is true. This is how I connect it with soul family members that, that comment on my videos. Source said, every single comment on your videos, you're going to ask, is this person in possession of a soul? Are they a, of the light? Are they in alignment to source creator? And are they soul family? And I shit you not, like 98% of them were soul family. And they were connected to... The frequency. I could have said all the wrong words. It was the frequency emitted from me through my voice that attracted them. And it's just beautiful. Source is the one that told me that when I was asking, how am I supposed to find my soul family doing YouTube videos? Nobody knows me. It's not my life. I've been a nurse forever. And that was the answer. Frequency. They're going to be drawn to you. They're not going to even know how they found you and it won't matter. So be brave. Pray to connect to your family of light, not only in spirit, but also here on earth and let them in. Know that you belong here in spirit and in body to be loved, to be held, to be touched and listened to and accepted just as you are. This is why we're here to learn, to grow, and evolve past the pain and trauma and integrate all that healing to remember our power and our abilities and our mission. I have connected with so many beautiful souls, my soul family, all across the world, and it was all done by frequency. We are indeed meant to find one another, and it feels so good when we do. When you're ready, there's an invocation. You can say your soul name if you know it or your earthly name and it will stick. I, Andalusia, queen of royal orders and spiritual gifts of my own free will choice, choose to receive all assistance from unconditional love so I can peacefully process any unresolved hurt, rejection, abandonment, judgment, or betrayal. 
I have learned how to love more un unconditionally through these experiences. I have learned that love allows all beings to freely choose how they wish to live. I wish to live with openness, with love and connection to spirit and in the flesh with those who can accept my love and love me too. Through the divine grace, I ask for assistance in attracting my soul tribe and family of light, heavenly and human, that I may experience belonging and conscious community, sharing my light and love with others through unconditional love. May all beings feel the blessings of true family of deep abiding divine love. So be it. I hope this message finds you well today. Please stop by violetlotusenergy.com. If you have not already, get your QET session so you can be cleared. And then you can start to have these wonderful, amazing conversations with your spirit team, with your archangels, with your angels, with your guides. Sometimes they're going to be family members or friends that are very close to you that when they transitioned, they volunteered to stay with you to help guide you. There's nothing to be afraid of. It is so much beauty and love and compassion and healing that can come from that. And I invite you to try. Remember that Truth Resonates podcast drops every Friday morning. And Sold or Soulless is my book available on Amazon. Paperback or ebook. It's not on audio yet, but I've had a couple requests for that. We'll see where that goes. You have a great day.